Hello, everybody, and welcome to Torch Snuffers. I am your host, Colin Connors. Today, we have a small panel to talk about the most recent episode of Survivor Game Changers. It was uh, it was interesting, to say the least. Um, I am going to quickly introduce who's going to be joining me to talk about the show. We have Stephen Lehman and, of course, Ben Millier. Hi, friends. So before we get to the kind of, I guess, the meat of this episode, I do want to take some time and I want to focus on some of the smaller stuff that we may have missed on the Mana Tribe, and then we're going to be de dedicating a huge portion on the back end of what happened and its effects and all that good stuff. So the main thing I kind of wanted to focus on on Mana Tribe is that Brad Culpepper was given a lot of positive screen time with the, his whole, this is what Monica wanted, this is what, this is what she went through, and how can I compare to that? So, Stephen, I want your thoughts on Brad and Monica's kind of story. And just for the viewers, like I said, we're going to be talking about all the crazy stuff that happened at the end of this episode because we want to make sure we cover everything that happened in this episode, not just the back-end drama. Yeah, um, I was glad that Monica got her sort of – or that uh, you know we got that segment of Brad. Um, I've said it before, but uh, I've really done a metamorphosis on Brad um, – and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm glad we had that sort of segment of him uh, opening up to Siri and Aubrey and really everyone in the tribe about, you know, how much he misses well, Monica and how. And, we find and him. my question to you, Stephen, is how much of Brad do you think that we see as a metamorphosis, or how much of it is just edited completely different this time around? Um, I think it's both. I think, you know, the first time his exit led to a you know, more of a villainous, early doofus story arc, whereas this time we are seeing him build those relationships, be more open, and now he's sort of able to empathize what Monica went through in Blood versus Water. So I think it's a little bit of both. Okay. And then, Ben, your quick thoughts on Brad Culpepper. That was the most I've ever felt for him. It felt like the first time that I really felt genuinely about him, which I guess goes to his growth as a character slash person i don't know i'm still i don't know i just it's still brad culpepper so it's hard for me to okay. fully jump on the train i would say this uh there is a funny 115 entry about brad culpepper read it because it's reciting all the stuff that i said about him doing blood versus water because i didn't love him in blood versus water but i didn't hate him like the internet did so okay we're talking about brad and he has a possible alliance with albie now albie hasn't been getting that much screen time but you know steven could the brad albie be the dark horse I mean, they said they have, what, Brad, Aubrey, Sierra, Sierra, and then who was the other person? Brad, Aubrey, Sierra, Sari, Troy, Zam. That's the group of five yeah. that's supposedly intact. <laughs> and it, could this be like in uh, Survivor's Second Chances where there was a majority alliance throughout most of the game, and yeah. it, that's just the one that's just predominant? We're just seeing a little foreshadowing of it? Um, I mean, that certainly could be. I don't, I, I don't necessarily think it is or isn't happening, but, yeah, I mean, that's definitely a... Um, good. You know, if it, if that is foreshadowing, that's a good way to do it. Well, come on, and you're a huge Aubrey fan, so you got to be yeah. somewhat happy that. Oh Aubrey yeah, she's my winner pick, so I'm you know, of course, I'm I'm all about that. But yeah. So so Ben, one of the really small moments moments was with Michaela tonight that I found interesting because while everyone was crying, she was just playing with yeah. sand, and I couldn't have been the only one to notice that. Come on. Noted completely, and I was just like, "Is this really what we're being reinforced about, Michaela?" Like, and I, I was about to say that is I feel not like she's being like people getting reinforced is like a adapted edit. Yeah, I was about to say, Stephen, that is not Bodo for Michaela, right? Michaela, she's Dunsies. Um, I, I mean, I don't really explicitly mean she's done, but I think that was definitely just shown to contrast because she, she's Michaela. She doesn't give two craps about anything, you know, and. I love her for it. <laughs> you love her for it. I uh, go wishy-washy kind of all Michaela. So, oh my goodness, was that all we saw of Lana tonight? Brad, Aubrey? Yeah, it was Aubrey Brad, Michaela. Aubrey, Sari saying she wanted pizza because she's from Jersey. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think. All right, so. Good Mana content. I think we're all, but you said, Stephen, you pointed out that Sari managed to make it to merge without going to a single tribal council. Yep. Is Sui going to be able to sink her fangs in? Yeah, because we haven't seen anything. Oh, I was going to say, we haven't seen anything from her, though. Well, the thing is, again, they don't give a tribe that 
or even a person who doesn't have to do much strategy, much content, because she, you know, she's been on every tribe that's won. Mm-hmm. Original Nuku, Tavua, now new new new. Uh, sorry, new new Mana. Also, tra- uh, fun fact: she's the only one who's been on all three tribes this season. Um, yeah, no, I think Ceres definitely gonna be able to sink her teeth in come merge because she's known for her electric post merge play. So I definitely would not be surprised to. And I think it's and I think it's very uh, important to note that with a player like Suri, just because she's not getting those confessionals now, they could be coming in later because as something we keep saying when we talk about confessionals and edits is Sandra went what three episodes post post merge of heroes versus villains without a confessional. I don't it know was, if it's necessarily post merge heroes versus villains, but I think there was a three episode stretch that she did not have a confessional. And also, someone pointed out online that. Every single player that's like still in this game has gotten way less confessionals than even Sandra and Tony and everyone else did. So it seems as almost production segmented the season to be like, okay, here's all the big characters in the pre-merge, and now that we're in the post-merge, we're going to start – everyone else is going to get time to flesh out. Do you think that's a fair assessment, Ben? I think that is a wicked good assessment. I think that the pre-merge was dominated by eliminating some of, like, mostly winners, like – focusing on eliminating those people. And I think that we're going to see a dynamic, like a landscape change come merge next episode to see where the game goes from there. So I guess what we should be looking for is who still has outstanding storylines that could be finished in the merge. And I actually think a lot of the cast, you know, even though we haven't been seeing that much of them, Haley still has time left. Brad obviously still has a story left. Aubrey could have a story. So this merge is going to be extremely exciting. So if this episode got you depressed, which it got a lot of people depressed, Tune in next week, and hopefully Survivor will kind of redeem itself. So I have all these, like, little notes. Um, should Debbie have lied about what Exile Island was just because my thinking is she shouldn't have lied just in case someone else goes? Do we think that's a possibility? Is someone else going to get a, cock- a Cochrane Award or a Boat Award? No. I mean, I think Exile was that one-time, one-off thing. Yeah. Um, so, otherwise, they weren't... I'll say it, I'll say it this way: If Exxon was going to be more than a one-off thing this season, they probably wouldn't have given Debbie what they gave her. Yeah, and and I and I think we all agree on that. So that was one of my early notes. Ozzy calling out Ty is Ozzy and Ty's relationship fractured. I think they were already on tumultuous grounds, so it's just a matter of will they be able to recover and work together in the merge? Which Ben, do you think Ozzy Ty have lot legs? No, I think that they are going. There's going to be changes, like. There's been so many mix-ups that there's so many dynamics and so many the landscape where you can go anywhere really when it comes to what's going to happen next episode. Yeah. Oh, and of course I had to make the note. Rob Sassonino said, "Survive a pizza. It tastes really bad." All right. I mean, I believe it. You're what? It's flown out to the middle of desert location, but it's pizza after say 18 days in the you know the wilderness. So it's bad pizza, but it's pizza. So. All right, and so the last thing I want to point out, and Ben, I want to talk with you about this, is that Sarah was given a screen, so given this kind of like confession about how she used to make moves, and then once again we saw snake imagery. That seems to be Sarah's motif. Do you think it's going to be a positive snake, like she's going to snake away to the end, or do you think she's going to be a post-merge villain? I don't even know if it's one or the other. I think they really just needed to fill time to, like, the vote was cut and dry. I think they just had to fill the episode with things before the tribal council. Because yeah. look, the tribal council got 20 minutes in its own right, and rightfully so, but yeah. there wasn't really much to go on with the tribe in terms of what was actually going to happen with the vote. So I think they needed that to be shown in order to, for time to be filled more than anything else. I don't, I think that Sarah I, I had will, her most limelight and her the biggest spotlight yeah. she's going to get in this episode. I will say, I was a little bit shocked that early on, of this episode, Jeff Varner gave a confessional basically saying, I think Zeke's 100% with me, even though Zeke perfectly played him last round, and then, of course, Zeke did have no intention of keeping him around this time. So let's just let's just talk about it. This show, which we love, Survivor, the premise is amazing. You take 16, 18, 20 different people, different walks of life, and you put them on an island, and most of the time, the show has done a fantastic job of just keeping it about the spirit of what do these type of personalities do in the game. But there have been a lot of instances in the past where you kind of see the ugly side of people. 
We saw it in Survivor Thailand with the uh, Gandia Gate. We saw, I would say we saw a little bit of it with Rice Wars and Redemption Island. We saw it with uh, in Worlds Apart when Will and Rodney were bullying Shireen. Like, it is a part of human nature. But when you see something that has so much of a lasting impact, and I'm not trying to diminish or take away from other survivor controversies in the past, it does kind of force you, the viewer, out of the game. It forces us to kind of take a moment and be like, okay, this game has real consequences. And we, we don't like to think of it that way. We like to analyze what does this confessional mean? How does this help this person get a million dollars? But tonight, Ben, Jeff Varner outed Zeke as being transgender. Now, there have been some conspiracy theories online that Zeke was transgender just due to how, how he looked with his shirt off. I never, I didn't give a shit about any of that. I never looked, I was just like, whatever. Um, ben, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and about kind of like the impact of what you think tonight was? Question. Um, this is a thing that happens. Like this is something that reflects what Colin said about like, true aspects of humanity, both the positive and the negative. So what happened with Varner and what he did with Zeke is something that happens in this world. Um, it's happened, like I, it's happened to me in my life where I've been outed with my sexuality before. It was known, or me wanting it to be known, something that can very much negatively impact a person and it can, Honestly, it can endanger them if they're not able to properly choose when this information is known to other people. And that's what makes it so, like, it makes, it was such an impactful moment in the show. Um, because Varner had the malicious intent for it to be known to everybody in the world. I think he was thinking very much in desperation mode. What is something that's going to keep me in this game? And was it a very weak point that he was trying to grasp onto? Yes, I don't think that that would have any legs if it was any other piece of information. But I don't think he intended for the entire like national audience to like be privy to what happened. And I think that it was only after it happened that he really realized the full, the full amount of impact that that choice was going to have on him. And that's oh. the thing that's most oh, go ahead, unfortunate go. because it's because he deserves, like everybody deserves that right. And we don't know what his background is and who he did and did not disclose that to, and that it, Z took that in the most humble, the most impeccable way that somebody could have that happen to, for it to be unknowingly broadcasted to a national audience. I, he was impactful in the way he handled himself in that situation. So I think that ultimately turned out to be a learning moment, not just for the people in the game, not just for Varner, but for everybody watching, but, the action itself is something that needs to be critically looked at. Yes. Uh, but what, what something I was thinking about after this happened, and I want to hear both your opinions on this. And if you, you or have any comments you want to make on this, I want to hear it as well as we've heard about times where production has just not shown things, especially controversial things. Do you think – that production, and they might have got might have gotten Zeke's permission before showing this. And do you think maybe they shouldn't have shown this, or do you think this is something that was too important to pass up? Because I honestly feel like if Zeke didn't want this to be shown, he maybe should have had some say in it. Now he seemed fine with it, but Stephen, what do you think? Do you think well, production you, should have shown it? Well, a few things. I think one, Zeke signed the you know contract to play, so I don't think he necessarily had a say in that matter. Yeah. No, I'm saying though, but still out of kindness. Kind I mean, of, like how of course, they, but, but I, the point still stands. Um, I I think with reference to this being brought up tonight, it was too significant of a plot point, both in 
the episode structure with just this episode's contained story as well as maybe how the rest of the season plans out. Um, and I think on top of that, it's shown as a perhaps a teachable moment in some sense. Because, I mean, if we remember, you know, going back to say, we had Boston Rob saying he didn't want to sleep in the shelter with John Carroll because he's a queer. Just quoting Boston Rob here. So we this isn't something that like I'm glad they showed it in a sense that it needed to be brought up, but I'm also hurting very deeply. So it's a weird sort of situation to be in. Well, I guess my thing is I want to hear, and you know, maybe I'll never get to hear this, that Zeke said he was okay with it being broadcast because, yes, he did sign the NDA bin, but something to keep in mind is that production does offer some courtesies. I mean, for instance, uh, Survivor Blood versus Water, tragically, while that shame was airing, Tina's son, Katie's brother, was killed in a car accident. Now, the contract they signed says you need to get come to the finale, and if you don't come to that finale, we can find you an ass ton of money and do all this other stuff. But production says, Tina, Katie, you do whatever the hell you want. We're not going to do anything. So that's the thing is like, yeah, you signed the NDA, but Survivor, you know, they want to at least treat the contestants somewhat nicely. That's why we don't see them pooping all the time. You know, you want to give, you know. I think that there's a big difference between what happened in the episode and what happened with Tina and Katie because well, I was just Tina and Katie not being at the finale doesn't impact the game. Well, what I was saying, though, is I'm just saying the NDA does have like and all that stuff, it, there is, production will make exceptions. I think you get what I'm saying with that. Just like how, you know, I may say, hey, you can air any footage of me, but the production's not gonna air me pooping nonstop. That's what, I, that's what I'm trying to say. I think another thing about the Tribal Council tonight is that it was so integral to the storyline of tonight's episode that if they cut it out, what content did they have to really set up Jeff going except, oh, hey, He's at the bottom, and you know, magically, they <coughs> they edit all around that entire conversation. Yeah. Oh, they totally could have. They totally could have if they wanted. But they couldn't with how not with how the vote not with how the vote went down. Oh no! I mean, they would have had to have staged voting, but they could have. And that's just from a TV standpoint. I mean, if they can cover up some of the other rumored stuff in Survivor, I mean, and I'm not even saying they should have. I'm just saying, to me, it's interesting that I want to hear from Zeke that Zeke was okay with it. Just for my personal comfort. And I think maybe, Ben, you kind of understand where I'm coming from with that. I think that had Zeke been triggered by it and kind of a reaction occurred, it would have been shown still. Yeah. And, but I think that if they, I think he would have been asked, is this something that needs to be discussed any further? Like, I think that that was probably something that was asked that wasn't shown as a question yeah. right. Like in editing. I don't think they would have gone further on that topic had it been something that triggered him to have okay, a I see what you said. Kind of like a middle ground of it. <coughs> okay. So I guess what I know is when I think about this and so Jeff Browner obviously was doing what he could to stay in the game. So I guess Ben is why the hell did he pick that? And I mean, because he is a gay man and why I don't know, like, why did he pick that? Why couldn't he understand what a horrible, stupid thing it was to say? Because I, I understand they're tired. I understand they're sleep-deprived. But to me, that just seems like... And that's not even to me taking a shot at trying to, like, get ahead. That was just being stupid. I don't, I don't know. Is I, there think that that being, I think that was just I think that was just being stupid. I think that was probably done, like... I think that probably before, like... Before this occurred at Tribal Council, there was probably a lot of filler questions and a lot of like boring straight to the point answers. And I think that he felt the desire or need to do something in order to like salvage himself. Mm -hmm. Do I think like, I don't understand the logic of him targeting Zeke out of all people, especially yeah. like, when Ozzy was the alternative option, but it was a choice that he made. And that's true. And that is what a choice that he made. But it's Steven, like, why did it never occur to Jeff to fake an idol to, like that's and that's the thing like to me like I understand when your back is up against the wall you make bad decisions and we're going to talk about his intent in a little bit 
But I just have no idea why the hell this came out. I, at this point, I'm gen, I'm I don't have words to to really you know to to, to say what else he could have done. I yeah, I, I'm at a loss, honestly. So um, that Jeff has, that has a point, though. Okay, real quick, Ben. I just think I think the thing that's most surprising about it is the fact that Jeff himself, the way that he identifies, can know firsthand the impact of that, which really is what makes me question his motive the most about it, because he is one of the few people that was in that at that tribal that knows what that impact could be, knows what it's like to be able to have to, have to disclose his identity to someone and to do it on someone else's behalf is surprising when he is himself had to go through that. Well, and maybe I'll take him for his word in which that he just thought that they didn't know the group of players that he didn't know his family didn't know. But either way, that was still fucking, that was still horrible. So stupid. Real quick, the thing I, on that note, does that mean that Varner thought Zeke was out and proud on Millennials Gen X and just magically chose not to discuss it this season? That's where it sort that's of. That's the question you have to ask Varner, and I think. Well, but I mean, that's like the sort of where, where that line of thought that yeah. you have, Colin, where he's just deceiving this X group of people is lost. Well, on and that's the thing is, I'm not even trying to def- to defend his line of thought. I'm just trying to understand it, and that's why I'm looking forward to the exit interviews because to me, I understand playing Survivor and doing stupid crap. I understand giving an idol to Russell. Russell, it's not the right thing to do, but under certain scenarios, it makes sense contextually. I can't make sense of this contextually, and I think that's why this is such a difficult thing to talk about because not only was it such a mean thing to do to somebody, it doesn't even make sense in the uh, thinking of the game. You know, Russell burning socks makes sense kind of. Or you can understand why someone would think that way. For someone like Jeff Varner, a gay man who is older, who so, you know, he's been through a lot, to do something like this to Zeke, it just doesn't it doesn't make sense. And Jeff Varner did post a statement on Facebook, and I am going to read it uh, in case other people haven't seen it. So this is what Jeff Varner said. He said, yep, I did that. And I offer my deepest and most heartfelt apologies to Zeke Smith, his friends, his life allies, his family, and to all those who my mistake hurt and offended. I recklessly revealed something I mistakenly believed everyone already knew. I was wrong and make no excuses for it. I own responsibility in what is the worst decision of my life. Let me be clear, outing someone is assault. It robs a strong, courageous person of their power and protection and opens them up to discrimination and danger. It can leave scars that halt for a lifetime. I am profoundly sorry. Zeke is a wonderful man, and I will forever be amazed and inspired by his forgiveness and compassion. I thank God for that and the gift of being an example as to why you should never do what I did. We cisgender Americans live with an enormous amount of privilege and should spend time pondering how we can use that for the greater good. When we disrespect or discriminate or turn blind eyes to it, we ruined all of us. I am deeply saddened at what my mistake unleashed, and I promise to use its lessons to do the right thing. Ben, I don't think Jeff Varner is a horrible human being, but I do think this was an obnoxiously awful mistake. And what does this do to his survivor legacy and to Survivor as a TV show. I agree with you. Like, Jeff Varner is not a person that's malicious or would do this intentionally to someone. I don't think he would ever cause the, these implications to happen to a person. But it, it is going, it, this is his third season, if I remember correctly. And like, He's not coming back. He's not coming back. His legacy is one of the old school survivors that have evolved in the game. That's ruined because ultimately, this is what he's going to be remembered for. He's not coming back. This is going to be the end of his time on Survivor and the thing that's going to be remembered most out of everything else. So it's unfortunate because he is such a sort of like a fan of the game and someone that truly loves the game of Survivor. So it's unfortunate that he's ultimately going to be tarnished by a stupid choice that he made. And, and, and that's the thing is that's why I'm so interested in hearing what he has to say tomorrow in all of his exit interviews because this was a choice he made and he messed up royally. And Jeff Varner was someone who, when he got voted out of second chances, 
I was super upset. And I loved him this season. He was my winner pick. I remember watching him in Australian Outback, and I loved him then. But it still doesn't reconcile kind of what a horrific mistake this was. Steven, what are your thoughts on Jeff Burner's legacy and his intent with what happened tonight? I I don't want to say this will tarnish his legacy, but I don't at this point see what else he can be not necessarily remembered for, but what's going to stand out most about him. Um, I think if you had asked before the season, you would have had, you know, him jumping down in the immunity challenge in Australia for peanut butter. Um, but now when you think of Jeff Varner, it, it's upsetting that the, you know, when you Google him, more than likely the first, you know, results are going to be Jeff Varner, Jeff Varner outed Zeke on Survivor. And, you know, like it's been said, this was a decision that he made. And I, I don't want to believe that he is this, you know, malicious person with such horrible intent. Mm-hmm. But when a decision like this is made, it's just, it's, it's shitty all around. It, it really is. Mm-hmm. And, and I do want to take a moment. Let's just say Zeke handled all of this with a level of grace I could not imagine. Like, I yeah. can't, as a straight white male, I can't really put myself in that situation. But if someone revealed a, something that I was keeping secret, I would have reacted much, with much more vitriol than he did. And he, what he got out of was something that he, you know, is extremely near and dear to him. So Steven and Ben, let's just take a moment and say, like, how upsta- outstanding Zeke was with yep. all this. Absolutely. I think Zeke handled that as well as anyone could have possibly. I mean... Yeah. Ben, your thoughts, same thing? It's just... He is a much better man than I would have been in that situation. Mm-hmm. I would have been much more direct about the impact than that choice would have made in the moment. Yeah. And so that's compliments to him for really biding his time and really choosing when to speak after it occurred. Yeah. Because my reaction would have been very similar to Ty's or Andrea. Maybe with a tiny bit of Sarah, because I would have sworn at him, and then I probably would have punched him on the shoulder and then stared at him in disbelief. Like, what are you doing to to him? What are you doing in the game of Survivor? Like, what the hell? So Survivor kind of does this thing every once in a while when it does have these major social issues where it does feel a bit more like a talk show. And Ben, what I want to know is, as a TV show, should Survivor keep, like, what are your thoughts? Should Survivor keep its medium now where it only devolves into this talk show when it absolutely needs to? Or should it, you know, try to focus more on this kind of stuff? Like, what, where do you think would be the best way for the show to go? I think it's really based off of what it naturally happens in the game. This was a natural occurrence in the game, and I think that it was handled very appropriately. Mm-hmm. I think that if properly <laughs> produced... Survivor can really drive a lot of these forward thinking conversations to a wide audience. Survivor is one of the most watched shows on primetime. Um, so it goes to a lot of places. And I think Sarah's inclusion and her, the impact that she had was purposeful to address that and to really turn the conversation from, wow, that was a very terrible thing to do to, what does this truly mean? in the current day. And I think that's very important that there is this medium that is going to this wide audience that is able to open people's eyes to what's happening in this. It is a reflection of our humanity, what's happening in our lives currently. And, and what's weird is that if you want go back and watch Survivor Bor- Borneo, they joked all the time, uh, Sean, uh, yeah, Sean, oh, a fat naked, you know, referring to Richard Hatch's sexuality as the uh, three-letter F word, you know, with a million dollars. And then that was just, you know, accepted. No one really said anything. But now if we look at just the evolution that humans and we as Americans have taken place since that show aired, it's Survivor really is kind of a mirror to where we are as a country and kind of where we are with social issues. So in a way, I think we should praise the show for not only being great entertainment, but also for being this mirror that we can look through and look at. 
that was kind of open ended for someone else to jump in. But oh, I, guess, yeah. I was gonna say, um, I agree, and I think that it they could they can very easily have shied away or minimized mm-hmm. what happened if they didn't want to really highlight it and really have the intention of using it as a talking point for people to talk about. So I think it's a commendation to Survivor that they are willing to really take it head on rather than shy away from what's happening in the game. I agree. And then the fun part about Survivor is next week everyone's going to be eating bugs and shit again. So we're going to be back to normal. Well, as normal as you can be in Survivor Game Changers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what I want to know, Stephen, as we kind of start to wrap up this conversation is I noticed a lot of people, and I posted this, or I saw this uh, was posted online for the episode, so I knew that this was coming, Stephen. They knew yes. that um, Zeke was going to be outed by Brunner. Do you think it was wise for production to kind of leak this to give people the warning, or was this like similar spoiler territory? Production never – explicitly leaked this. Mm-hmm. There was rumor mills going around throughout the Survivor th- survivor community, what have you, um, yeah. since post-filming, but as recently as Sunday, which is when I was told that there was a significant happening on this episode, obviously this being what it was, um, so that folks could, you know, mentally prepare themselves for it, because, you know, we were told it was going to be very heavy, and uh, it was, you know, I... Mm-hmm. I said this in our group chat, but I I cried for a solid, you know, 10, 15 minutes after the episode finished, which was like a solid half hour or 40 minutes of crying tonight. Um, but see, so, would you say that this, you know, this was a good thing to get out in the open because at least we're talking about it kind of like Ben's thoughts? Y- yes, I think it is a good thing that it was brought out because in the sense that I'm glad it it puts – a very important issue out to the forefront mm-hmm. and it shows how how damning something like outing can be yeah and you know like i said i love jeff varner as a character but by the same token i am glad that i'm even more glad at the fact that you know the rest of nuku sort of stood up you know collectively mm-hmm turned around and said, you know, screw you, that's wrong. You, yeah. you don't get to do that. And, and that's the thing is, and I really, I kind of side with Ben, and I think this is kind of the stance most people are going to take, where Jeff Varner was not, he's not a horrible person. He was playing the game of Survivor, and he took it way too far, and he really should have thought about that. And it's, what, I honestly rank this as one of the, and, and it may sound weird that I'm trying to compartmentalize this in the game of Survivor, but that is what we do as a show. I actually rank this as one of the dumbest moves in Survivor history because maybe he could have gotten Ozzy voted out. I mean, maybe at least he could have submitted his legacy. I, but that was. I want to find it as a move. I would just. Yeah, no, I, was say, I don't I think. I find it as a stupid choice. A stupid yeah, it's not a decision. move in the context of the game to me. Yeah. I think it was desperation. Well, then I'll say it's the worst choice ever made in this game. Yes, that I would agree. I, 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 would, I will say that. Three. Because if you want, I understand that move. It's too strong of a word to describe that action. So, yeah, I, I will say that was the worst choice. Well, I almost to, – to sort of say that real quick, I almost think it's too weak of a term because if you say something was a move, you're sort of compartmentalizing it to just sort of chalking it up to game. It's like, oh, they made a move in the context of the game, whatever, whatever. I think this goes beyond the scope of that. So, yeah, but I do agree it was probably one of the dumbest. Yeah, just and that's just ignoring all the other stuff to go along with that. So um, the reason why I brought up the fact that clearly it was talked about beforehand was the fact that, you know, Stephen Fishback already has a blog up. Uh, Dalton Ross already has 4,000 words written about it. So the Survivor community knew it was coming. I didn't know it was coming. Um, I didn't know anything weird was happening this episode until Stephen brought it up. But I guess all I can really say is that's the show Survivor, what happened tonight. It's just as real and as authentic as all the other funner episodes, I unfortunately don't have very many answers for Jeff's motivation. Only he does, and hopefully he will shed some light on them tomorrow. Or yeah, tomorrow with all the show. I will say though, next week is merge. Come on, guys, we gotta be excited about that. And yeah. we have <laughs> sorry, we have an obnoxious 
the famous Survivor special guest on. I'm not telling you guys who, but it's going to be absolutely amazing. It is a special guest who you're not – the person you thought about, that Survivor, that's not who it is. The next four Survivors down, that's not who this Survivor player is next week. Can but we give uh, them a hint about the season that, he, that they're from? No, no. Okay. No hints. Actually, all I'm going to say is this. This person – is a game changer in a very, very unique way. I'll say this. He is a game changer in a very, very unique way. Yeah. So it's going to be awesome. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be more raw survivor. Uh, side note, part of me thinks they should have uh, – don't do that in the chat. I don't know if they can see that no, or they not. they can't see it. Okay, they can't see that. All right, Steven was giving a spoiler. They don't get the, they don't get, I don't think they get the reference anyway, but anyway. Anyways. There was a part of me that thought they should have still voted at Tribal for semantics, but that's just that's just me. I'll get over that. Um, so next week's going to be absolutely amazing. Let's all just take a breath, realize the good and the bad of this show, and I'll see you all next week. I want to thank Ben, and I want to thank uh, Stephen for being on tonight. Bye, y'all. Bye. Bye.